as Murray said, this isn't uh, an easy uh, gospel passage to look at, but let's see if we can break this open a little bit this morning. Two Irish families, the Butlers of Ormond and the Fitzgeralds of Kildare, were involved in a bitter feud. The disagreement centred around the position of Lord Deputy. Both families wanted one of their own to hold the position, and this tension broke into outright warfare between the two families just outside the city walls. The butlers, realising that the fighting was getting out of control, took refuge in the chapter house of St Patrick's Cathedral. The Fitzgerald followed them into the cathedral and asked them to come out and make peace. The butlers, afraid to do this because they thought they might be killed, refused. So, as a gesture of goodwill, as a gesture of goodwill, uh, the head of the Kildare family, Gerald Fitzgerald, ordered that a hole be cut into the door. He then thrust his arm through the door and offered his hand in peace to those on the other side. Upon seeing that Fitzgerald was willing to risk his arm by putting it through the door, the butlers reasoned that his intention was serious. They took hands through the door, shook hands. The butlers emerged from the chapter house and the two families made peace. Today, this door is known as the Door of Reconciliation and is on display at Dublin Cathedral. The story also lives on in the famous expression, to chance your arm. I looked with anticipation at what the first gospel reading would be that I would preach upon upon my arrival. Maybe a nice juicy parable, a miracle, or just something nice and visual. No, that wasn't to be the case. A passage about dealing with difficult people was the one with which I was presented. Equally, you may have wondered the same about what God may want to say about your new rector. And a passage about dealing with difficult people comes up. Today's gospel reading upon first glance may not seem to be very spiritual. It sets out the nuts and bolts, the practical arrangements for dealing with conflict, not just those who we have a minor disagreement with, but those who have sinned against us. It's grounded in the acknowledgement that community life isn't always easy. It's sandwiched in between the story of the lost sheep and the celebrations of finding that lost lamb on one side, and on the other side, Peter asking how many times he should forgive a member of the church, where Jesus replies 77 in this gospel, and seven times 70, which is a lot more elsewhere. As with many things, the area of forgiveness uh, may be easy in words, but is harder for our souls. But one verse that always strikes me when reading this passage says this if they still refuse to listen tell it to the church and if they refuse to listen even to the church treat them as you would a pagan or a gentile or a tax collector treat them as you would a pagan a gentile or a tax collector so how are we supposed to treat those who we're in dispute with like the pagans and the tax collectors, the worst, the outsiders, the outcasts. But hang on just a minute. How does Jesus say we're to treat those people throughout his life? Gentiles, pagans are welcomed into the kingdom, which was bigger and wider than anyone thought. Tax collectors become disciples. So it leads me to wonder, is this passage so subversive that it calls, calls us to love even when in dispute? 
that we treat those who hold a different perspective with dignity, that rather than just dismissing them, we work through our differences. A messy, difficult thing, because being in community is a messy and difficult thing. An important note is this, nowhere does it say that within the journey of forgiveness that we shouldn't take right and appropriate precautions to protect ourselves and others. And this is where the wider community has a role to play. The way that we deal with conflict says a lot about who we are. It shows what is at our core. Like the sticks of rock sold down at my previous parish of Paul Key, no doubt all through the summer, which when you snap it anywhere, still says Paul through the middle. When we're snapped as individuals, when we're snapped as a community, I wonder what's at the core of us. Does it still say love? The church in the Winterbourne Valley and Milton Abbas patch is made up of a group of followers, explorers and searchers, trying to live out their faith in Jesus. We try to serve God and our communities in everyday lives. This works out through our desire to bless our communities through caring, praying and through spreading a bit of fun around us as well. We'll make mistakes from time to time, but that's because there's so much going on. Oh, and we're not perfect. We're ordinary people and we hope that you will find a warm welcome in any of our churches. This statement is from your, or should I say, our website. It's one of the things which convinced me to apply for the role as rector here, assured me that I might just fit in, searching and exploring together, making mistakes, blessing our communities, making Christ visible and spreading some fun around. This is what being partners in the kingdom of God is all about. This kind of honest, truth-telling, forgiving, challenging, disagreeing but loving anyway kind of a community is hard to live out. We say we want it, but it's costly. We have to continually ask ourselves if we're willing to do the work of being vulnerable, loving someone who is always going to disagree with us, even about the things that matter deeply to our hearts. A good friend of mine talks about a parish profile that he once read when he was um, applying for a job as a priest. And they said in it that they were looking for a priest who will love them most when, who will love them when they most need it, but least deserve it. They're looking for a priest who will love them when they most need it, at least deserve it. In response, my friend, a priest not too far from here, said that he wants to be part of a church community that will love him when he most needs it, but least deserves it. So may we be a community that love each other when we most need it, but perhaps least deserve it. More than anything else, we must be a church that loves because love is itself the medicine of the gospel and summing up all of, the, of what God is and all that God is doing in Christ. If we fail to love, then we are failing the gospel itself. So may we commit ourselves afresh to this today. May we be a community which when broken open says love. May we be a community who welcomes those who are hard to love. And may God give us wisdom as we journey together. And may we chance our arms and find the peace of Christ. Amen. <laughs>